As Dan said, my name's Andy. I'm the sim tech from St. George University in London in the Department of Paramedics. I've been in post now six years and I like spending money. Okay, but sometimes I look at stuff and I think that's awfully expensive what it is. Okay, we can make that. So, uh, quick background. I mean, uh, my background, I'm, I used to be a firefighter and I used to, to train firefighters in trauma care for nine years. And then I got offered a job at St. George's as a SimTech. I went, ooh, that'll do. So I now travel an hour and a half each way each day from my home in the Isle of Sheppey to Tooting Broadway because <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> okay, so um, we have a, a module called Transition to Paramedic Practice, which is the last module the third years do before they graduate. Okay. And the lecturer of the, the module lead came up to me and said, oh, I need something that an actor can wear so we can do a live a cannulation using a sharp thing. And sharp things and student paramedics don't really go together. <laughs> okay. And be able to run fluids through it. So historically, what we used to do was we, we used to have an actor and we used to stick a cannula on their arm you know, with a Vicar Flex and stuff like that, and then hang a bag of fluids up and say, yes, I'm running fluids through. And that was it. And then they would lose track of how quickly the fluids were running because it was a theoretical process. So what the lecturer asked me to do, the module lead, was come up with a design of something that, that the actor could wear, that they could cannulate and run fluids through and flush. Yep. There are things on the market, they range from 160 pounds up to 400 pounds. Okay, so I thought, I'll make one. Okay, so who's done silicon stuff before? Okay, good. So, when you make wounds like you've done now, make moulds, you tend to use just, just A and B, don't you? And if you mix A and B, you get that. That is purely A and B. So it's really stretchy, ideal for wounds. Yeah, so you want to pass that around? That's actually a leg skin for the Leardell ALS Mannequins IO leg that I made. Yeah, because to buy them is expensive, so I made them. Really simple. Okay. So if you then if you're then making moulds, the silicon needs to be a bit firmer. So you add what's called a deadener or, or a hardener to it. Okay, and it makes it harder. Okay, so to start off this process, okay, someone's nicked it, but there you go. I needed to design something that was that shape, okay? So have you heard of the SAM splint? You know that rolled up aluminium blue and orange stuff? Yeah, that's what that's made out of. So this mold face here is half of the SAM splint. So what you do is you cut your piece of SAM splint you take off the blue side, because it's the thickest side, and then you make your mold, okay? And what I did was I basically got a piece of SAM splint, put a pencil in the middle and just bent it over it, then took the pencil out and put a clear plastic tube through the middle, and then some um, plasticine either side just to, just to fill it up, made a mold, and then poured me mold, yep, yeah? okay? Worked really well, because what you end up with is that yeah so this is a and b silicon with hardener yep yeah. it's a bit more solid okay and this is your mold this is my mold for that wound okay so this is a prototype of a wearable cannulation sleeve yeah so if you want to pass that around okay so if you're making larger molds you you need to make them firmer so these small molds you're making making that are absolutely fine for your little wounds. If you're making a bigger wound, you need to have a bigger mould, and that mould has to support its own, um, its own structure, hence you put dead in, okay? So the other thing is, we're giving student paramedics sharp stuff, okay? Now, when we're doing either cannulation practice or drawing up simulated drugs, where they use sharp stuff on my computer, I have my accident page form open all day. <laughs> yeah, because they'll come in, I've got a noodle stick injury. <coughs> okay, how did you do it? I was drawing up drugs and they're drawing up needle into my finger. 
Oh, I've done it twice with the same needle on two different things. Okay. All right. Filling that, you know, sit down on my chair, fill that form in, don't do it again. You know? Or they'll come and say, uh, um, break, uh, snapping ampules is a classic. Yeah, we're all nodding. Yeah. Okay. So I, we supply them with, with little plastic ampule breakers. Yeah. And the first thing I say is, will you use an ampule breaker? And if, if they say no, that's when my sympathy stops because I buy them 5,000 at a time, okay? And I think they eat them, okay? I then do a test, or if there's anything in the wound, is there any glass in the wound? They, they say, oh, I don't know. Squeeze it hard, does it hurt? No, like no glass in it. That's my technical test, okay? <laughs> so anyway, so you're giving a student something sharp. So in here, that blue thing is a section of the SAM splint, because the SAM splint is aluminium, there's a section of that molded in here. So the way this would work is it would go on the patient's arm like that and then you can bend it round and you can fix it on, okay? And then with various pipes and pipe work, you can actually have a feed, okay? Now the thing I'm looking at using, who uses clean bleed mats? Anyone use them? Yep, they're brilliant for PPH. They really are, and trauma wounds, okay? But they've got a pump on them and a reservoir that circulates. You can rig that up to this and you can have blood continually circulating. So when they do set the drip up, it will draw the drip into the, the um, arm and they can flush and they can put the drugs in, okay? So this is prototype B, okay? And it does what I'll pass it around. And the reason that I use the SAM spin as a protection, as opposed to something like um, um, carbon fiber sheet, is that the SAM spin bends. So it bends around the patient's arm, yeah? Okay. So how do we hold this on? Really easy, okay? So the way we, that we do all our wounds, if we're just doing a, a simple wound, is that I buy loads of tights. Some of them I take to work, <laughs> okay? And all, we, all I do is, is, is I cut sections of tight up about that long, and the actor puts one on the arm, we put the wound on, and then we put another one over the top that holds the wound on, so it's color matched to their skin. Then we put several holes in the top tight, uh, fractures into the wound, then we pour blood over. Yeah, it works really well. If you're doing a repetitive sim and they want to go out and have a cup of tea, they can take it off and you stick it back on. Yeah, okay. We'll look, I'm looking at doing the same sort of thing to this. Yeah, <coughs> so they put a piece of tight on, on the arm. That goes on top because then, they, then there's no interference with the arm. And then you put another tight over the top and they, 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 then they can cannulate through that. Yeah. And that way, that can be on all day, you know, sort of thing. So that's what I'm looking at doing. So de design to the first prototype, which is that one, okay? Four hours to mould it, through the moulding time, really easy, okay? This bit of tube comes out, which means you can get another bit of tube and put it in and replace it, yeah? Um, I've got mould, as you've seen, so when I've moulded this one, I can start moulding another one, or I can make another mould and make multiple ones. Mould making is really easy. It really is, okay? I'll pass this round so you can have a look, and then I'll just tell the process of how I made that mould, okay? It's really easy. As, as part of your Simtex toolkit, who's got a hot glue gun? How big is it? <laughs> you need for for molding if you get a a decent sized hot glue gun that will give you a lot of glue because you need it okay it will work better than those little tiny hobby ones okay so the glue gun that i have the actual glue sticks a foot long that yeah, it works really well the other thing you need is a clean surface now i've got a ceramic tile that's about 600 mil by 300 mil that's my molding surface this is what i molded this on yeah so i stuck down the, this, yeah, the plug of that, okay, and the way you stick it down is you get four strips of double sided tape, you go down there four times, you stick that up on your tile, yeah, you've got your tube running through your clear plastic tube, and then you put some silicon, um, some plasticine in the edges where you've got the gap, and then you build a wooden frame around, then what do you have to do? What's next? I've got, a, I've got a void that I need to fill. What do I have to work out? The volume. 
How do we work out a volume? A bit of math here. Yeah. You could do, yes, or you could measure it and go left times depth, depth. Yeah. And if you've got your calculator, you could work it out, you times those together, and it'll give you it in if you do it in centimeters, it'll be cubic centimeters. Okay. And that actually cross matches over to a milliliters. Okay. Pour a little bit more than you need. Yeah. Okay, because I did one of these and my mould leaked. That's another reason why you have hot glue going, because you can then squirt it in holes, seal it. Okay, so you pour the mould and then you leave it. <laughs> the tendency is you go back and go, oh, it's not set yet. And you get fingerprints all over your mould. Okay, but just leave it. Okay, don't forget before you mould it, spray mould mold release spray on it. Otherwise, you just get one big block of silicon. Okay, all right, but that's what ended up, okay? And it's really easy to do, okay? Anyone use the IO legs, interosseous legs, the short leg that's got that little bone on top? Yeah, that plastic cover or silicon cover is 105 pound for five, yeah? I now make my own <coughs> because I've got five of those, laid them on my um, uh, tile, made a you know, wall around it and just molded the mold. So I can now make my own, okay? And what you need to do with those is when you make them, is you need to put a little bit of hardener with the silicon because you want them a little bit firmer, yeah, okay? And that, because they're, they're drilling into the, you know, bones, they want to be sort of fairly tough silicon. Silicon like this would tear, yeah, you know, when, you need, when they're drilling in, so you want it slightly harder, okay? So normally if you're making the mold, you do e equal quantities A, B and hardener or deadener. If I was doing this again, for the IO, I'd do about I'd do about half, you know, one one part, one part, point five, most probably, just to make it a little bit firmer. Okay, so that's how I make that mould. Um, what about other things? What about um, who uses the the cannulation arms? We've got the pot and the lines and the veins. Yeah, how much are those veins? The set of veins. How much are they? Anyone know? That under pound for a skin and a set of veins. Yep. I make my own veins. I go onto eBay and put in catapult elastic because that's all that vein is in that arm, the catapult elastic. Yep. Okay. So when they're practicing cannulation, all the arms have got catapult elastic in. When they're doing their ALS hospice, all the arms have got the, the actual veins that, that, that sh should be in the arm, unless I'm doing a really quick sort of change around because something's gone wrong and I re-vein re it with catapult elastic. Yep. And I can buy 30 feet of catapult elastic for five quid. And it works. Simple as that, okay? Now, you generally get a slightly bigger size of catapult elastic, but that works because it then makes the vein stand out a little bit more and they can actually see when they miss it. They go, oh, missed that again. It's vein there, how can you miss it? You know, okay? Oh, it's crazy. Okay, so moulding is easy, it really is. Um, if it goes wrong, you just get a big lump of <coughs> silicon. Just get some more silicon and try again. As simple as that, you know. But the trick is not to, not to play with it. Just mould it, go and do something else, like have a cup of coffee or something. Okay, come back and, you know, don't touch it again. Okay, and then I normally leave overnight. I mould it in the afternoon, leave it overnight, and then it sets. Okay, simple as that. Um, any questions? Stun sign. Oh, sorry. Um, when you're doing making veins, have you ever tried to sort of put them through and, and steal them so that you can make a more advanced sack of veins? Yes. So I've looked into because some of the arms have a cross vein across there, yeah. don't they? And when they're manufactured and moulded in, yeah. okay, um, it's a little bit awkward mm -hmm. because you need to get the right glues yeah. and it doesn't work that well. So unless you're going to use the vein across there, then all I do is just put two, two lines coming around. And when they go over the fingers and come back at the end, if they're, if they're looped, I get some, some NG tube, there's a gastric tube, and some really small cable ties, and a hot air gun. Who's got a hot air gun in their kit? Nobody. Get a hot air gun, okay? Because if you've got a piece of plastic, a tube that you want to curve, you warm it up, yeah, you can curve it over the top of the fingers, 
put some cold water on it and it will stay curved. Yeah? Whereas if you put it into the veins where it's straight and try and bend it over the top, it will kink and shut. Yeah? Okay. The other thing you can do, who's had problems with the veins where students will go in, cannulate, and they don't get flashback, and they withdraw and then get another cannula, try again, don't get flashback. Well, they actually, if they waited, because of the waste of the blood in the bag, you do get flashback, but it's slightly delayed. Yeah. So I've got one of my arms has got a clean bleed pump on it. So you turn it on, it continuously pumps through the arm, and you get instant flashback. <coughs> yeah. And if you use one of the new silicon arms, which is all silicon, where you can squeeze the arm and include the, the vein, it's really good because if you don't occlude the vein and you take the white cap off the back of the, the cannula, it shoots across the room. Fingers crossed if the students in the way. Okay, so there's little things like that you can do, but as I said, moulding, it is really easy. Okay, there will be some hints and tips coming up of where you get your stuff from. Just buy your stuff, have a go. You can either, there's two ways you can measure it out. You can weigh it out, like Dan did this morning, or you can just measure it out. You get half a litre measuring cups and you measure it out. To do a large quantity like that, I've got a, I've got two and a half litre plastic can. I've cut the top half off, and that's my mixing jug. Yeah, and I mix it all in there, and I pour it out of that. Okay. And the other thing to do is make sure when you're mixing, is you have your A side stuff and your B side stuff, and they don't mix. Because if you put the top of the A onto the B, you go back the next week and it's a big lump of silicon. Okay. To just make everything clear. Okay. But have fun because it is fun. Okay, and you can mould anything. You can actually, if you're good and your actor lets you, you can pour um, silicon directly on to the actor's skin and mould whilst it dries. Okay, you wouldn't do it on me because I'm hairy. Okay, and it would hurt. Okay, so what you would do is you would mix your silicon, put your pigment in, mix it all up, and wait for it to start to go off slightly, and then pour it on. And then as it goes off, you just mould it in. And then you can put your wound in it, so you can put your pipes in it, stuff like that, and then you paint it, you know, to match. Okay, and then you they, they can peel it off afterwards. Yeah, good. Any other questions? Go on. You know, we use some disposable stuff, so we don't have to clean it out. Is yeah. it easy to like clean it out? Yeah, so if so you'll see it, it's easy on, on the plastic stuff, but but generally if you've got the half litre beakers, when you leave it to dry, you just you just pull the bottom off and it all comes out and you can use them again as long as you know which beaker you mixed it in because if you've got a, some residue of a or b and you put the wrong one in you can set before you need it so but i mean we i buy 50 beakers for peanuts you know and you don't you, i mean i'm lucky I, our university has got i've got an amazon account so i just email the you know person with it saying can i have this please and she goes yeah no problems you get it friday brilliant you know so it's just yeah, as simple as that and there's stuff on amazon um, I make all my own drugs. Some of them I take to work, but otherwise, so I make, literally I've got a trolley the size of that that has got over a thousand individual ampules of drugs that we use because they just eat drugs, okay? And we have the, um, the vena puncture bottles where you've got uh, benzopenicillin and stuff that where you reconstitute. Yeah, if you get from NHS supplies, they're a hundred odd quid and the crimpers 400 quid. You get the same off of Amazon for 70 quid and the crimper. You get 100 vials and the tops and the caps. And you can reuse them because I tear the tops off, clean them out, put new tops back on and reuse them. Stuff like that. Good. Oh, one more. I do the same, um, but I was just wondering how, um, how do you remove the natural elements? Or sometimes... A pair of side cutters, very carefully. Yeah, what, sorry? Wire cutters. Wire cutters. So just, ho just hold the glass on the side, yeah. just, you peel it over, bin the, bin the aluminium ring. Yeah. And you can use a cap again as long as it hasn't been punched half a dozen times. Yeah, yeah. But the caps are so cheap. Yeah, and we've that... used um, like a half inch on the Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, something just like that. Just make sure, you, you know. Yeah, yeah. If it breaks, it, you've got more fingers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, in terms of your prototype, um, I'm sure you picked up how much force is really to push the way over the stage? Don't know yet. Yeah, that's the next stage. You'll be, you know, we're doing risk, risk, risk assessment. What we more like to do is put it on a sort of live patient. Push really hard. If they go, ouch, it's failed. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we, if we get flashback, we go, oh, that works really well. It's, yeah, it's, one of the, it's one of these 
new Bluetooth cannulation devices. You get flashback, it's not even connected. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the next stage. You know, we got it, and we got to say, okay, how can we do some testing that it's not going to go through? And it'll, it'll, we'll, we'll find somewhere, and we'll also contact our health and safety department because they'll come in and have fun. <laughs> right, anything else? Oh, one more. Uh, you should say about the interaction with skin. Yes. You can replace the bone. The other thing you can do with the bone is a square piece of plastic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, the ones I've got a square bit of plastic. Okay. Soldering iron. Let's go over the top with that. Let's make sure you, that the room you're in hasn't got a smoke detector. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a soldering station because I, I do component re replacement on on mannequins and stuff like that. And I've got an extractor fan. So I'll just put the, 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 the hose of the extractor fan out my window and then just put it you know, um, close and then you can solder or you can just you know, melt the holes over. Do you think it'll work with the moulded bones? If they're plastic-ish, plastic otherwise aldite or something like that would work. You know, just mix up some aldite and just put that in there. That works. You just want to make it firmer, don't you? Yeah. So experiment, you know, Amazon. Sorry, other places are available. <laughs> thank you very much. Can, can you thank Andy for helping me out? Because uh, basically, I. <laughs> <laughs>